You know, I know today is gonna be a good day because we have a brand new CPU from AMD. It's just really, really weird. Not only is it US and a specific retailer exclusive, but it's from the last generation, sort of. Um, it's budget, sort of, which is which is weird in this day and age. And apparently it's really fast, which I guess is not weird. We, we want really fast things. This is the AMD Ryzen 5 5600X 3D. That's right, the iconic 5600X budget king from the Ryzen 5000 generation is getting an upgrade here. But, um, it's, oh wow, why do they make boxes like this? That's this? That was what was in, in the box, you, it's just air. Here's the CPU. Um, like all the other 3D V-Cache chips, uh, this doesn't come with a cooler, so it's, it's just the CPU. Make sure your BIOS is updated and propaganda. That's it. Like I just mentioned, this is an exclusive chip. Um, it's exclusive to the United States because it's exclusive to Micro Center, a US retailer. Now they are pretty well distributed across the states. There's, there's quite a few Micro Center locations, but you can't buy this on Amazon. You can't buy it in the UK. You can't buy it in Canada, which makes it a bit odd that I'm holding one in my hand up here in Canada. Um, thanks AMD. <laughs> The other thing to note is it's limited edition. That might be part of this. Apparently, according to AMD, they are not going to make another round of this chip. Whatever they have right now, that's the stock that Micro Center is gonna sell and then you're not gonna be able to buy them anymore. That's probably because there's going to be cheaper Ryzen 7000 chips coming out soon. Um, and this is kind of just a stopgap, but it is a pretty cool one. Unlike AMD's current generation of Ryzen 7000 CPUs, this, like the 5600X, is based on the Zen 3 Ryzen 5000 series. So that means the cores on this chip aren't gonna be quite as performant as the 7000 series, I guess this is the current or the new generation. Um, this is seven nanometer instead of five nanometer. It's gonna be clocked a little bit lower than the current generation and even lower than the previous one. Pretty much across the board, you're losing a couple hundred megahertz over the non 3D V cache version. This is a 3.3 gigahertz base, 4.4 gigahertz boost, uh, but it has 99 megabytes of cache. The non 3D V cache version has 36. Now, to a lot of people, that might not sound like anything interesting or important at all. You've probably scrolled past the cache specs on a CPU a hundred times. Given the price point, obviously AMD couldn't just add that much cache directly on die. It's super expensive to do that. So instead, they have a separate cache chip that's basically just like glued on top of the normal die to add that extra cache. That does come with some limitations. Uh, overclocking is a lot more difficult and as such, it's just disabled in general. There are some boards you can get that allow it, but in general, it's officially disabled and you will very much void your warranty if you try to do it. It also means, like I already talked about, the clock speeds are lower um, and the temperatures can get a little spicy. That's probably part of why the clock speeds are lower. Uh, interestingly, this chip is higher wattage than a 5600X. Instead of 65 watts, this is 105 watts. Um, on the newer generation, typically the X3D chips are like seen as the efficiency option. Like, wow, you get so much performance for so much less power because that cache really helps in games. Um, but I guess there there were some requirements here <laughs> for that. You've probably seen like a 5800X3D, which this is kind of competing against. And I'm very interested to see what the performance is like comparatively, because it's only two cores less, six cores versus eight on the 5800X3D. Um, but it's substantially less expensive and you only lose one megabyte of cash comparatively. So even if it's like a percent or two off the 5800X3D um, at substantially less money, this is only 229 US dollars. I'll be uh, pretty stoked. It'll just also be kind of shitty because you can only buy it if you live in the States and I imagine they're probably not gonna be selling them in six months. Of course, I'm not just gonna hold the CPU in my hand for 10 minutes. We are gonna game on the thing and we are gonna look at some lab results, but not before I tell you about today's sponsor, Casetify. Thanks to Casetify for sponsoring today's video. Congratulations, you've watched Neon Genesis Evangelion and joined the I have no idea what happened, but it was amazing club. You know what's even more amazing? The new Evangelion Cross Casetify collection. Experience all new Casetify designs based on the hit anime series and choose from a variety of characters, Evangelion units, and logos that suit your style. All Casetify cases are designed to protect your phones from even the harshest of impacts. All while looking better than this phone. <laughs> Wanna kick it up a notch? Check out their AirPod Pro case and phone charging dock to make you really feel like an EVA pilot. Head over to Casetify using the link down below to sign up for the waitlist and get priority access today. 
<laughs> now that we're gonna put this into a motherboard, we can talk about some of the other advantages and disadvantages. Um, it still has pins, right? Ryzen 5000, so it's gonna go in an AM4 socket. Um, that's great because DDR4 is super cheap compared to DDR5, and the motherboards are all over the place. They are less expensive, you can get used ones for super cheap. It's just a super inexpensive platform to build a CPU around. Um, and you might even already have one of these boards and you're just looking for a quick upgrade. Uh, this probably could be a pretty good option. It does have pins, which is kind of annoying. Uh, just before we started shooting again, after that little sponsor spot, I had to bend some of the pins back in on the corners because I was holding it for so long. Um, it's fine, it went in, but um, after not having used pinned CPUs for so long, it's it's a little annoying to go back to it. <laughs> I definitely prefer LGA sockets. Hey look, a screwdriver, ltdstore.com. To see how well this weird new exclusive chip performs, the lab put it through its paces compared to the 5800X3D, which is Ryzen 7 chip. That's an eight core chip that's substantially more expensive. Um, and right off the bat, I mean, looking at this, 1% low summary, so this is a average of all of the games we tested. Cyberpunk 2077, F1 22, Far Cry 6, Hitman 3, Red Dead Redemption 2, Returnal, and Total War Warhammer 3. And 1% lows is 2% slower. The average FPS, 4% slower. That's pretty damn impressive. I'm just scrolling through the results here to see if there's any like big standout. Uh, definitely Hitman 3, 1% and average are substantially worse. It's 6% slower on the 1% lows and 9% slower on average. 30 FPS average is, is pretty noticeable, but we're also talking the difference between 330 and 300 FPS. So that makes it a little, a little less of a problem. Returnal, almost exactly the same. Probably doesn't benefit from multi-threading as much. Total War Warhammer is 2% across the board. Yeah, like in Returnal, we're talking four FPS average. One FPS on the 1% lows. Total War Warhammer is five FPS average difference. Red Dead, five FPS average difference. 10 FPS in F1. You're really not talking about a lot here. So you're talking on average a couple frames or a few percent performance difference and looking at the price difference, I mean, if you talk MSRP, it's $200 less. However, the 5800X3D is not at MSRP anymore. Just looking at PC Part Picker here, we can see Amazon and several other retailers have it for 329. So $100 price difference, let's say about 25% drop in price for only a couple percent drop in performance. Seems like a pretty stout chip. Um, I don't have any comparison numbers uh, against Intel, but we could kind of jump from 5800X3D to an Intel chip. These numbers will be a bit old and a little bit out of date, but also still relatively representative. Looking at our 5800X3D review, we all kind of know the 5800X3D is a pretty stout chip, especially when you compare to 12th gen Intel, um, even comparing to some of the top performers on Intel's side you're looking at the same or better performance in gaming. Given that information, if we take the fact that this is a couple percent slower than the 5800X3D, you're still talking a performance class, at least in games, that is similar to the top end of Intel's previous generation, which is freaking awesome considering this is a $229 CPU. The GPU on our test bench is an RX 7600. That wasn't what we benchmarked with, um, just to try. I mean, clearly it games, it games good. If you already have an AM4 board, like if you're on you know, 3000 series Ryzen and you happen to live in the States, the exclusivity window about this is the worst part. I'm, I'm hoping that just means that the new generation is gonna have similarly priced chips and maybe a similarly priced X3D option at some point here. Um, but right now, it's just kind of like, here's this great thing that you can't buy. For reference, those lab numbers were done with an RTX 4090 and 32 gigs of 3200 mega transfers per second CL14 memory. Um, so uh, the absolute peak of everything else pretty much. And that's kind of the optimal memory for this platform. You could also try 3600, but relatively pretty similar memory performance there. So overall, this seems like an awesome chip if you have you know, Ryzen 2000, Ryzen 3000, and you're looking for a inexpensive, very performant upgrade, and you, you know, you're not doing like streaming and gaming at the same time, although there's other ways to work around that, and it probably still would be fine. But you're on a budget, this 
could be an awesome upgrade, especially when you consider the cost of going to a new platform or say upgrading to Intel, let's say. Um, you know, you have to get a new motherboard, new RAM, you gotta go DDR5. It's come down in price now, but it still is expensive. So just dropping a new CPU in, it can be a pretty good option, except if you don't live in the States or you don't live near a micro center. Let me know your thoughts on this chip and uh, hit the like button, get subscribed and check out another short circuit I've done. Maybe the minis forum one we did at Computex that was pure, pure chaos.